Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dreadcast. I'm your host, Dread on X, along with the Mercedes Benz of podcasting, Jovia. On tonight's episode, we have some exciting news about upcoming sequels and releases, and we chat about the games we've been playing. Episode 13 starts right now. If ever I stray from the path I follow, take me down to the English Channel, go me in where the water is shallow, and then drive me out back to show. love is free and life is cheap, and as long as I've got me a place to sleep, some clothes on my back and some food to eat, then I can't ask for anything more. So come on, everybody, sing a one, two, three, four. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? Not much, man. Just sitting here, just finished playing some couple games on the computer, just trying to, you know, get up to date on these new ones. What about you? <laughs> get up to date on these new ones. There's so many coming out all the time, I gotta, like, and to find the time to play them is just another story. Ah, dude, tell me about it, man. Tell me about it. It's been it's been a busy week, actually. It's a, it's a good problem to have, but it's definitely next a problem week, when you don't have enough time. This week, next week, actually, the rest of March uh, is looking pretty solid. Yeah, I'm full tell. of upcoming releases yeah well what, what, what did you play well you can't don't leave me in suspense man what did you well just before we started here i was playing some more ape out hmm. so you're like yeah oh. so it's, like, it's perfect for you you're like a big gorilla <laughs> uh, <yeah>. that's me <laughs> no you're your icon not you but <laughs> <laughs> yeah you uh you're stuck in this cage at the beginning yeah. and uh the first thing you do is like you know, it's it's literally like we've got one button to grab and one button to push. And you, uh, okay. so you push the guy in front of you and he goes slamming into the wall. His limbs fall off, blood splatters. Oh, just like in real life. <laughs> exactly. That's what gorillas right. do, right? <laughs> right. This is what, yes. This and, gorillas um, in nature. So every time, and it's cool because the game is all about music, all about sound. So it's very jazzy, very percussion heavy. So as you're mm-hmm. running around and every time you're like doing something, you hear like uh you hear like percussion instruments and the more you're like attacking it kinda like it builds up. Like uh one of those so- one of those games where like it's you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so it's very it's very into the music and into the sound effects and so you So is it like a is it a rhythm game? No, it's like I think it's like a more of a procedure generated you you start off in these levels and you're going up and down these corridors. And there's these little yeah. dudes with guns, and you can either grab them and use them as a meat shield, and then you right. throw them into another guy. You only take, like, three hits, I think, and you're dead. And then you start over, right? You just do runs after runs. Like, it's just kind of like a, ro- mm-hmm. I guess you would call it a roguelike or... Yeah. So, I well, don't... What's the, what's the goal of this game? I, you know, I saw that it had released, but I, I haven't seen anything on it. Like, I haven't... It's like... I don't know the game. the The name of the game didn't sell me on it, so I didn't pay a lot of attention. I, I honestly don't know much about the I game. I know, and, and I wouldn't have either. But people were talking about how cool the music is and the way it looks, and it's cool. It's kind of cool. It's like the top down, and just you grab these guys and you like you whip them into each other, and they splatter everywhere. And then you can pick up like their torso or their limbs and carry those around and whip them at the other guys, and yeah. it's it's very visually. And that with the sound effects put together, like it's a very interesting looking game. Uh actually I'm I'm looking at it on Steam now. Uh you know this reminds me of a game called Teleglitch. The the top down sort of roguelike like uh line of sight, the the the, the visuals look a whole lot like Teleglitch, which yeah. is if you if you enjoy Ape Out, uh you should definitely check out Teleglitch. For sure. Oh, that's a shame. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, Teleglitch uh, is known for being, like, super extra hard. <laughs> it's, like, really hard. Yes, yeah, game seems also pretty punishing, too. Yeah. Like, you only yeah. get a couple oh, hits, and these guys are shooting at you while you're trying to grab them, right? So. Right. Uh, yeah, it looks, it looks interesting. Maybe I'll pick this one up, man. It, it looks, it looks yeah, pretty it's good. Definitely, it's definitely cool. It's different. And like you said... I don't know if, if you probably can't hear the sound now, but it's the sound definitely uh you know adds something to it as well. Right. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. 
That uh, that definitely looks interesting. So these are these are people that are shooting at you. It looks yeah, like. like you're a gorilla, and these are like people, like armored people, and have guns. And so I guess you just broke out of your cage or something, and now you're just aping out all over the yeah. There's all over the place. There's three. Uh, there's three cages at the very beginning of the game, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, I can't remember if there's one in the third one, but in the first one, there's another gorilla dead in it. So okay, you're kind of breaking out, and I don't know. if... Maybe you knew the other gorilla. I don't know of the story. I didn't pay attention, but it's it's like the uh, it's like the the origin story for um, uh, was it uh, War of the World? Not War of the Worlds. Planet um, of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah. You're breaking into the prison, <laughs> taking revenge, starts. taking revenge on all the humans that have captivated you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah so, but you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's just something different. So yep. used to playing, you know, shooting this or just whatever. It's just something a bit different. How long does a game take? Like how? Like if you play a round, is it you know five minutes, ten minutes? Yeah, 30? like I I got to round two there, and mm-hmm. it only took a couple minutes to get there. I mean, it's not it's not hard. Oh, okay. Even if you're going up and down every hallway trying to like you know make sure you kill every person, <laughs> it, yeah, it's pretty quick. You, would, you know, if you're seeking revenge, <laughs> yeah. Right, but, but I mean, when you when you know, I don't know if your if your hit points kind of reset at each heat. But I mean, if you're down to your last one, it's like I'm not going looking for trouble. I'm just heading it to the the end, right? Right. So I don't know if cool. I don't know if at the end there if they kind of reset. So okay, I have to check that out again after. Definitely interesting. Yeah, I like I like uh, I like procedurally generated content. So it yeah. just keeps things a bit fresh, right? Now. Yeah, as long as it's done well. Yeah, sure. Don't end up with anything crazy. <laughs> some games, some games do uh, do procedurally generated content a lot better than others. Just... Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> No Man's Sky. I mean, stuff. they uh, the reports that when they first came out, they had some pretty like crazy worlds that ended up making right where it was like just way too cold and yeah, it was it was weird. <laughs> it was very strange. Some like, things are already strange to begin with, and then. You land on certain worlds that are like super frozen and there's nothing there and like just end up being yeah. like procedurally weird, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well I've seen I've seen some uh well like Dwarf Fortress is actually a good example. Um some of the stuff that comes up in Dwarf Fortress is absolutely crazy nuts. Crazy. Um like because uh, even even some of the like the history of the world in Dwarf Fortress is totally randomly generated. And yeah, like then, at uh, the beginning when that world's getting made, they're just, it's going through like, you know, it's coming up with like heroes and gods and things that have existed yeah. throughout the time and wars, artifacts, yeah, all kinds of stuff. I was like watching a video of, I heard about the the redoing it and I was watching mm-hmm. a video about this game trying to figure out what it was and yeah, it looks so weird. Just the uh, little dots and colors everywhere and well, that was just... When- when uh, when Dwarf Fortress comes closer to releasing on Steam, which that that was actually a big bit of news this week, is yeah. Dwarf Fortress yeah. is coming to Steam because uh, because of some medical issues um, for the for the developers right. and they're trying to they're trying to pay medical bills. But yeah. um, when it comes to Steam, we owe ourselves to do a dedicated Dwarf Fortress chat because that is probably one of my favorite games of all time. So it's out now somewhere else. Oh yeah, it's it's okay. totally free. I mean, you can download it from like if you just right, right. Search. You just go to the website, right? Yeah, you can you can download it. All the community tools are are all completely free. Right. I mean, I I full disclosure, I will be purchasing it on Steam because I if for no other reason than to just support the developers. Right, right. Um, but the the things that they do in this game is just it's 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 you could use Dwarf Fortress as a case study in procedural generated content for like computer science classes and stuff like yeah. it's it's epic the things that they do in that game all all done by one person by the way all developed by one guy and uh i think tarn is the developer tarn adams and then zach adams uh, if i remember correctly is his brother who does right. all the play testing so yeah. yep yeah it yep. looks, it two looks man team. looks complicated it's, it is ex- it, yeah it's extremely complicated. that's putting it mildly yeah I mean, there's there's a reason that Dwarf Fortress memes exist on the internet for like learning curves right. for a game because that's yeah, it's it's pretty heavy. But once you once you get an idea of what the game's trying to do yeah. and and 
and then what you want to do in the game, and then and then thirdly, how to do that in the game, it really starts to. So, so it like really starts to once off. you, I know. Well, like you said, we'll get into it a bit later. But it's like once you do create the world, though, and it kind of gives you the the backstory and kind of puts all that history in place. What is yeah. the goal then? Well, the goal is really what you make of it. Um, There's, yeah, well, there's two modes of play. Uh, You can go into the world as an adventurer, like uh, like a a stereotypical roguelike, Uh, true sandbox roguelike. Like you, you can create a character, you can run around, you can you can go into, um, uh, you know, dungeons and and defeat defeat uh, hordes of goblins, and you can do all of these things. Top down though, like like the view of the map. Uh, it's top down ASCII generated graphics. Okay. So like it's it's not even graphics. It's it's like ASCII characters on a screen that represent, right. you know, the grass and the trees okay. and the, the 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 enemies and and blood and and all of that stuff. Right. Um but when you're fighting, you're actually the game is actually simulating um physical body hits. So for example, you can read through like a combat log in Dwarf Fortress and you can see that oh um, I, I, you know, swung my sword with my right hand and hit the goblin on his left arm, severing, severing sp- like specific muscles in his arm. And now, you know, you know, the goblin's left arm is hanging limp on his, right. on his, on his body with like the bone showing and stuff. Or, or maybe I just scratched him or maybe I lopped it all the way off and I can pick up his arm and beat him with it. Um, there's all sorts of things. One problem that they actually had <laughs> and and they kept it uh, but it was totally unexpected is that carp this is uh, this is a true thing i shit you not carp as a fish right mm-hmm. carp uh in the game uh, for some reason they were modeled as as if they were larger than the dwarves themselves so these are like giant carp um if you can imagine how big a dwarf would be in like a regular fantasy Three feet. movie yeah, but I mean, that's still a big fish, right? <laughs> um, but because because the game because the carps were modeled to be larger than the dwarf uh, than the dwarves, and because the carps were modeled as carnivores, fishing actually became a dangerous profession because carps would like if you were fishing in a river of carps, like you know, if you can imagine like piranha, well, carps would like just devour the dwarves. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So if you were if you were like you know trudging through the sewers or something yeah. in some unknown place and there happened to be a carp living there that was a real threat. <laughs> a serious threat. That's crazy. So, yeah, and they just decided to leave it cuz you know, <laughs> carp. <laughs> um so that's one way to play. You can play as an adventurer or you can do the stereotypical. This is most people play in the mode where you you create a fortress which okay. you take you take seven dwarves and you you sort of give them some starting equipment, very rim world esque and you you start a fortress and you start to build walls and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and people start um, or other dwarves start migrating to your fortress. The problem in 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 the last two years or so, maybe a little longer, they've introduced vampires and were dwarves like werewolves, but now they're dwarves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 other other unsightly beasts and sometimes they will try to infiltrate your your uh your your fortress as a migrant dwarf so you know and they and they will now lie to you as well like you it used to be easy to find a vampire because you could look at that dwarf's history which is all modeled right and and you could read that oh well this dwarf is like 6000 years old mm-hmm. he's probably a vampire right but now the dwarves will actually lie to you even in their bio. So okay. you have to watch them very closely and see if like, you know, try to figure out who do- it, it becomes, it becomes a, a like a whodunit, like a clue right. game. Because eventually, like if you have a vampire in your fort, another dwarf will find, um, will report that they found like a, like a, a, a dead dwarf in their, in their bedroom, right. like drained of blood. So you got to like, figure out what happened. Yeah, you have to figure out who was there and how could this have possibly happened, and then you have to do something about it, which is even harder. You like you have to either try to kill them, uh, 
and hope they don't wipe out like your entire army or you've got to trap them in some way or it's it's very wild so they not have mirrors um i look I, this is this <laughs> hey, problem <laughs> solved question it's problem like, solved get a couple mirrors uh, <laughs> yeah um i don't know man i don't know i i, I don't know how insane though intense it's it's there's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. Like there are, um, like basically you can dig down, uh, down into the earth, which, you know, the whole strike the earth thing is from dwarf fortress. So they, you strike the earth and you dig down. And, and if you dig too deeply or too greedily, um, you know, there, there are bad things that live yeah. underground. Very, very, very bad things. Um, yeah, there are things that will destroy an entire fortress just by kind of looking at it. Yeah. But all of this stuff is procedurally generated. Hmm. Oh. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a legendary monster in here, but you know, a legendary monster in my game is not going to be a legendary monster in your game. Right. And the names are certainly not going to be the same either. Everything is procedurally generated. It's kind of nuts. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. Yeah, it yeah. Gives everybody it's... like a separate game to play, kind of like a separate experience. Oh yeah, I know. On the Dwarf Fortress forums, there's uh, there's a thread that's like three or four thousand pages long. That, that it's just all about what people are doing in their fortress. Yeah. Right then, just stories of uh, yeah, Dwarfy McDwarferson, and uh, and what they're doing that day. Yeah, it's crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm excited about Dwarf Fortress coming out uh, coming out on Steam. I think that will give the the game a little bit more coverage. I think yeah, that was a good idea. Once it's once it's once it's re out and it's on Steam and stuff, then people yeah take more. I think this. yeah, because downloading it and installing it and playing it right now are very. I don't. Know, it's it's uh it's it's a little intimidating. Yeah, at, at the least. So. You know, I, who wants who wants to download a game and then download like a sound pack because you can get music and stuff right. and yeah. download a tile set so you don't have to look at ASCII characters <laughs> and, you know, so on, so forth. It's there's all sorts of utilities for assigning jobs to your dwarves and and all of this stuff is really kind of considered like you like necessary right. by, by a lot of veterans. <laughs> like, like my RPG maker. Yes. Like downloading sprites and like mm -hmm. tile patterns and everything. It's yeah. Like yeah. RPG Maker is just a, just a game engine. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't give you the assets yeah, to make the game. Right. I know that when I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, RPG Maker. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get back into that? That's pretty cool. You should, uh, you should definitely. Because they have a really definitely. cool tutorial system in there where they... They have kind of walk you through each step of like creating your first mini map and creating your first, you know, city and dungeon. And it's pretty cool. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Walking you through the story and creating characters and giving them skills and weapons and armor. It's insane. Yeah. See, I'm not, I'm not creative enough to actually. <sighs> Me neither. <laughs> That's a problem. Up, like, an idea for a game. Yeah. It's really cool. It's like I've been playing Final Fantasy for years. But yeah, when it comes down to it and trying to create stuff, I'm like. I have no clue. It's like, that's why I play games. I don't make them. Well, I've, I've been playing a, a couple of things this week. Uh, obviously, my main focus has been eco. Right. Uh, the server is going fantastically well. We we uh, we started the server back up on Sunday. Everything's going going really great. We've got like 18 people, I think, that are active on the server right now. Not like right this moment. Right, but, but at, uh, at different times, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, <laughs> we've got we've got some crazy contraptions already being built. I think uh, I think we we've progressed like within five days. We've already gotten to the point where we're about to make our first uh, trucks in the game. Wow, nice. which is really good. So we've we've teched up a little bit. Um, yeah, well on well on our way to trying to tackle to take meteor. down the meteor. Nice. So we've got about forty days left real time uh, before that happens. But I think I think we're well on our way. Yeah. Like, obviously, the, the normal thing is 30, so, you know, 30, they must know that 30 you have a chance to. Is that kind of, do you think that a lot of people could get within, like, you know, that time or, like, fewer days? Oh, yeah. Or is that kind of, 
it really yeah. depends on how many people are and if they're working together good. 30 days and uh, the server, well, the, the game actually has difficulty settings that you can set based on how many people you expect to be active. Right. So right now um, I'm, I'm right. I feel like I'm right at the point where we're, we're very balanced on mm-hmm. the server. Like the difficulty uh, to gain skills and the number of people feels balanced to me at the moment. Do you think if you had um, like another 10 people, things would get a little too easy? Like oh, if, yeah. At the settings that we've got, right, that's right. I, would, I would have to up the difficulty at All that right, point. Right, it would just be too easy. But um, the the thing is, is that as an individual player, and, and some folks have mentioned it to me, as an individual player, it feels like a very, very slow game. Um, right. and, it, and, and that's because it is as a player, it's, it's extremely slow because I, I am literally at a point on my character where I have to wait another three days before I can get another skill to specialize in like three real time days. Right. But if you multiply that by the 17 people that we have on the server as a community, we have a lot of skills right. available to us, but you're not the um, one putting those skills in play. So it's kind of, it doesn't feel that way. Right. Right, but that's that's where the stores and the economy and the contract board all kind of come play, right? Right. So, like, right. I'm I I I recently took bricklaying, um, and I took it for a very specific reason. We have to start upgrading our buildings to to better materials, and right. brick is sort of one of those one of those better materials than like just logs, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um. I took brick laying and I've been pumping out as many bricks as I can and I, and I'm putting them up, up on the store. So I don't have to play in order to make those materials available for other people. I don't have to be there to sell it. Right. Um, all I have to do is set up my shop in such a way that like, if I've only got five minutes um, and people have sold me the materials that I need to make clay, mainly like, well, uh, like if they have sold me clay, which is one of the things I need to make bricks, right. then I can log in, I can go over to my kiln, I can set up a job that'll take like an hour to run, that it will make all these bricks, and I can just log off. Like, I don't even have to wait for the system to process all that. It, it's just going to put it back in the store, and the store is configured, sell bricks. That's right, it. Right. So over time, people are selling me all the clay. I hop on, I make all the bricks, I can hop back off and... Go do something else if if I only had like if I was on lunch break or something. Yeah. So that's that's very good. Everybody else is doing that. Like we've got a chef, we've got we've got uh, a mortar person that, that does mortaring. We've got miners, we've got smelters, we've got uh, engineers, we've got all that stuff. It's all being worked, right? Farmers, it's all it's all out there, and uh, people have stood up their own shops and and it. it I mean, you can't go five minutes on the server without seeing somebody buy or sell something, yeah. which is great because that means materials are changing hands. Now, is there a skill um, there that nobody seems to want to pick? Uh, no, no. The, the thing about eco is that all of the skills actually kind of rely on each other. Right. So it's, we actually have the opposite problem and that's where people feel start. They start to feel stuck is that, you know, as a, as a bricklayer, I need uh, materials that like, uh, a, a mortarer, uh, you know, somebody who does mortaring, they, they, they can make pitch, uh, which I also need for, for the bricks. Mm-hmm. I don't have mortaring. So I have to buy that material from somebody. Right. It would be really nice if I had mortaring. Um, but I don't, but, but I do have gathering and the person that does the mortaring does not have gathering. So the way that this crafting chain works, I go out and I, I literally take a, take a scythe and cut the grass, it, long grass, right? It, all over the place. I just gather up grass, which is like plant fiber. And then I take that and I sell it to our person that does the mortaring, who will then burn it down into pitch, which I will then buy back from that person and make bricks, which I will then sell back to my mortarer because my mortarer needs, you know, a, a nicer building. Yeah. So that's that's how this works. This stuff is constantly changing hands. Right, right. So, yeah, and I don't I don't have to be on or off. Uh, to get that done. So most of the time when you're on, though, you spend your time just kind of gathering? Uh, gathering, building, um, making more bricks. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah my, my life is bricks right now because everybody's sort of trying to 
upgrade their homes and, and stuff. Right. But, uh, the, the better material your house, your houses are made out of, your, your structures are made out right. of, the more skilled points you get per hour. Okay, so, so it's like a nice beneficial to upgrade your house. Yeah. So that's why everybody's like, oh, I want bricks, because that's the next logical step for them to, instead of waiting three days, they might have to wait like an hour and a half for their oh, next skill nice. point. So it, it actually makes a huge difference, especially when you start getting into those longer term things. The, the real irony of the thing is that the guy making all the bricks here does not have a brick house. So <laughs> he's too busy making money. So guess what I'm doing tomorrow? Yeah, actually, I've made a lot of money on it, but, See. but that's the economy. It, but but I'm also going to spend a lot of money getting a truck yeah. so that I can go out to like the clay pit and, mm. and dig up a bunch of clay or an excavator so I can dig up all the clay all at once. Um, once we get to that point, because there's excavators and dump trucks and tractors and right. shit in this game we can get. So eventually, eventually, we'll get there until I become the oil man, and then I'll just pay everybody for, pay everybody to do everything for me, and I'll never play again. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is you can become an oil man in this game. You can you, there are oil rigs and everything. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, 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 yeah. So so eco is going fantastically well. Cool. What one thing I didn't realize is just the uh, the sheer love that uh, the eco community has for this game. And I think it's fantastic. I mean, these people love this game and uh, I love it too. I consider myself part of that community. Now it's really, really kind of fun and it's super relaxing. (laughs) Super relaxing. It's a super relaxing (laughs) game and people will just like come and hang out and just chat on the server it's, yeah. it's, i've met a bunch of a bunch of new and and friendly people through this game and yeah, it's, it's really cool yeah that's cool mm-hmm. um on the flip side of that the not so relaxing game that i've been playing is the division two nice how how much are you into it <sighs> level four <laughs> nice <laughs> i'm like level four i'm like it's still a little tiny peon in the game i've had it since wednesday um I've I've played it maybe maybe three or four hours, uh, and it's a ton of fun. I really enjoy it. In fact, I I I would say if you're thinking about the division two and you're and you're into looter shooters, um, Destiny or or or, or Anthem, um, yeah. Anthem is its own discussion. <laughs> but you know, if you're yeah. into those types of games where you're you're finding random loot, yeah, uh, the division two is fantastic. Pick it up for sure. Um, it is not launched like Division One, where it was it it was kind of in a sorry state and needed some help. No, this is this is it's clear to me that Ubisoft took the Division One after they had worked on it for several years and uh, and added all those new systems on in Division One. Like that's a fairly complex game already right now. They took they took that and then they built Division Two on top of it, right. and it's really really good. Like really I, I had a really good time with Division 1. I picked it up day one. I never had mm-hmm. some of the issues that other people had where they were kind of getting stuck in doorways and stuff like that when you're going into like a common area where there's you see other people. Yeah. Because then when you go yeah. into the world, you don't see anybody, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Same thing here. So I, I got my character to max level and I leveled out my, my home base and stuff. And I never did yeah. any of the DLC. I did a couple of the, the missions or the raids or whatever they're called and... It was pretty good. I had a good time. Yeah, Division Two is uh, is really in a good state. Um, there there have been some issues with it, as as all new releases do. But but thankfully, this is a this is a major game release that seems to have gone off relatively without a hitch. Yeah. Um, thankfully, and and it's if if you were looking for more Division play. Like you had in Division One, right? Um, Division Two is where it's, it's solid, at. Yeah, it's solid. Yeah, it's solid. That's good. That's good it's, to hear. I I think it's harder than the first one. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think it's harder because the AI um, makes a point to flank you now, and like, they, they did like that in the first one. But yeah, I guess there's like, I guess there's more variety of like enemies now in this one, and they do that stuff a little bit more. Yeah. There, the there's one, more they, variety. The first one, they'd kind of come at you from behind, and some guys would have bats. But now this, I heard this one, there's, like, people with, like, 
mach- machetes and chainsaws and oh <laughs> yeah the, these guys are ruthless man so. and but but I, but I think that the the AI decision making whatever algorithms they have right I think AI decision making on oh their their placement and you know trying trying to trap you into a into a bad situation yeah. is much better and I think it's much harder right uh, you have to pay much more attention to your own positioning now right um, it's 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 a difficult game it's taking me a while to get used to it. But I, I am really enjoying it. Did you play much of part one? Yeah, I got I got the max level on part one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got the max level. So I know I I finished the story, so I know all about uh you know Krieger and, right. and, and all them. What did yeah, you play that on? Part one? Uh PC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, PC. I'm I'm I play on PC mainly because I've got, you know, a pretty heavy duty rig that can run everything at max. Right. So that's nice. Plus it lets me stream it to, you know, my, my TV up front so I can play on a controller if I want to and couch right. couch play, or right. I can play seriously back in the back. And, you know, that's cool. and, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I, why are you, are you, are you looking at like PS4? Is that, well, is that the first one I played on PS4, but I tried the beta out for part two on the PC. And I What'd think, you if, think? I, yeah. And I think if I get, if I end up getting part two, I probably play it on the PC as well. Just I would. I'm spending. I would time recommend on PC it. And... Yeah, I would recommend it. if you pick it up on PC, man. Co-op is easy to just drop in and drop out of. Yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. We we need to we need to line up some co-op play, man. Yeah, that's cool. We can do it. Yeah. I know a couple other folks who were thinking about picking it up. Um. I would highly recommend picking it up if you're on the fence and, and but you're worried if it's a good game. Or... Yeah. Well, I'm not um, worried about that. I like. I played the first one. I've heard enough good things about this one that as long as it's solid, like I know it's just more of the same good division play then. Yeah. I, I can I'm tell you. Board, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you right now. It's, it's, it's a solid, it's a solid release. Yeah. Cause I definitely and, enjoyed um, my time with the first one. So. Yeah. It, I, I enjoyed the time, my time with the first one as well. So for sure. Not so many Parkers this time though. Eh? Not so, no. Not so cold out. Can you get no, shorts? No. Can you get shorts? Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing shorts. My my nice. my character's wearing shorts. Hell yeah. I'm in. I started with shorts, man. That guy was all bundled up in parkas and the other one in toques and <laughs> yeah, no, no, not in this one. No, no. Uh the weather effects in this are much more varied. Yeah. Um in New York you you just had you just had uh, you know, snow. And blizzards. And even the blizzards were few and far between. Right. And this one right. you get thunder. You get rain, you get yeah, thunder cool. and rain, which actually, believe it or not, you know, that's two different things. I love, um, I love rain in the video games. Uh, and it looks really good in this. You get fog, you get meaningful fog yeah. in this one, right? So the fog in this, like you can spot an enemy in Division 2, and if it's foggy, or even if you lose sight of them, your HUD will not continue to highlight that person hmm. unless you have a skill that allows you to do right. so. You, so you lose people in this. And that that's another thing about the positioning that I was talking about. It, it's harder. <laughs> it's harder because you don't know where everybody is right. all the time. So That's cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else you got, man? Well, that's it, man. I've just been playing a ton of Borderlands this week for, for actually, like, gameplay and what I've been playing. Okay. Me and the kid are probably, like, done our... We've only got like another mission to go, and we'll be done our first playthrough of Borderlands Two. So, right, right. I don't know. Well, how how is uh, how is how is that going? I mean, I mean, we are all familiar with Borderlands, I think, but but how's it going with the uh, with the co op stuff? Oh, it's it's so good. It's like if I'm in the middle of doing something on the computer, like graphics or something, he'll uh, you know he'll just jump in and play by himself, and then when I'm done, I can just pick up a controller and hop right into his mission and help him out and dropping loot back and forth to each other is awesome and yeah it's like we're going against the boss or something he drop and they drop something you know i can just if i don't want it i can pass to him i still have like 50 golden keys from back <laughs> when i used to play it before so like every time we get back yeah. to the city he's like oh can we open the chest can we open the chest so i'll yeah. go and spend like five keys and get all like these epic purple items that he'll like <laughs> oh let's go try this out let's go try this out he'll, he's he's gonna be like he's a fan of schluter's 
He oh, loves, that's he awesome. Loves, he loves the loot shooters, man. Anytime that's some awesome. loot drops, he's like just dying to go try it out. So I really like it. I, I really know, like it. I don't know if we're gonna go to uh, pre sequel after this because I've only gotten to level ten on pre sequel, whereas Borderlands two I've beat like a dozen times. So oh, you shouldn't. Yeah, take I don't know your, if we want to go to pre sequel or do something else. So we'll see. See, Borderlands is like that quintessential sort of couch co op. Yes, game. Then I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Yeah, Borderlands too. It's, it's such a great game. Awesome. So. All right, man, we gotta like, get into some news here. We got like, quite a bit of news. Yeah, it's been a busy week, like we were saying. Well, so, like, what do we well, got we're, here? Well, we're on the Division sub- subject here. I was reading that, uh, you know, normally when you pick up a digital copy of a game, you <laughs> end up having that big download that they usually let you download beforehand, right? Yeah, the preloads. Right, so you're all kind of ready to go. And that's great, even if it's 80, 90 gigs, you know, which is a lot of games these days, no big deal. Right. So when you buy the physical copy, you're thinking, okay, I've got a day one patch maybe of a couple gigs, but then I'm good to go, other than maybe like installing the game. I'm not sure. You don't do that on the PS4 anyways, right? Uh, like what, buy a physical copy? Yeah, like you know, how on, you know on the Xbox, you put in the disc, don't you still have to like install it? Uh, yeah, you can on the Xbox. Uh, right, you know what? PS4, you don't, right? On the PS4, um, I have seen that done. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 did that. Okay. On the PS4. Well, I don't, I only have yeah, like one awful. disc copy, so it's like. But it was, but it was terrible the way that Final Fantasy 15 did it. it because it didn't really tell you that it was installing. Right. It, it just, it lets you play like this tutorial mission and, and it never, like, I was in this tutorial mission for like two hours. I'm like when can when when does this end? <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't realize it was installing, and then the next day I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get through this, and yeah. it was a completely different game oh, the next day because you were like, all done, and now just let you go through. Yeah, let me go through. <laughs> what the hell <laughs> happened? Funny. I don't know what I did, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess uh, I guess the division two, like you know, like I said, you can probably preload the digital copy like normal and get it mm-hmm. early. Yeah, but if you bought the physical copy. You were stuck downloading a 90 gig patch on day one. What? It's That's like, like, why did you bother with a physical right. copy? It's like, I know you wanted it on the shelf, but A, <laughs> not only did you get your copy of the day of, but then what? having to go home and, inst- and patch it 90 gigs worth. Oh, see, at that point, oh. you keep it in the wrapper, you register your game on uh, what the U store or whatever it is. And uh, with you, you play, and yeah. uh, and you just download the game. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> just download like, it. Like one of those people who don't have an external for their PS4, who are just buying all physical copies. Maybe they don't want you know have yeah. to buy an external to put all the extra storage on. <laughs> still downloading ninety. That's a lot of gigs. Actually, the PS4 Slim. I think it, what is that? That's a five hundred gigabyte drive. Some of them. Oh, I, I think the inside, originals yeah. came out with like 250 gigabyte drives in, in, back in the day. I don't know. I got one of the originals. I think mine had like a five, I think. That, I that's like, that's like basically your hard drive. Oh, g- g- games are way too big. I had to get like a four terabyte external for my PS4. Yeah. Because I had so yeah. many games and there's 80, 90, 100 gigs. It's insane. It's nuts. It's nuts. <laughs> Um, but, but, uh, uh, four terabyte external hard drive, if you've got the right one, it's just as fast and it's, that gives you plenty of space. That's nice, man. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you, Sony, for supporting that, but good God. <laughs> These yes. <things> are huge. <laughs> it just seems like a lot for somebody who made the choice to go physical to still have to download 90 gigs. Like, that's kind of like you're getting the worst of both worlds. <laughs> You're still, having to, leave, you're still having to leave your house, and now you're having to sit there and wait for 90 gigs. <laughs> yeah, like, God forbid you go out into the world and buy something you know that you can yeah. touch. It's like, I don't care how fast your internet, 90 gigs is 90 gigs. Like, Yeah, no, that's true. You know. It's true. Uh, it's, it, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot yeah. of data. And that's a patch. Um, the, you know, I don't... Actually, when I downloaded the game, because uh, I bought a digital copy, I don't remember it being larger than, like, 90 gig i think that was basically the size of the game right so like so why would they why would they have to do that well what's on the disc i guess they changed everything <laughs> well i do know 
I do know that like in order to to do to to print physical copies, you have to when a when a developer says they've gone gold, um, right. that that is the day that they say, oh, okay, well we're shipping our code off to the printers to be printed on these CDs or DVD ROMs, whatever it is that they're printing it on. So that's that's the gone gold. That's the gold date. Um, and typically that can be uh, depending on how big you you feel your game is going to be. Like I would imagine Division Two, they expect to ship maybe a couple million copies. So right. Uh, that could be months before the game is actually even completed. Um, and Division 2 already having the internet as a requirement to play, I believe. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that without looking, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you need the internet to be able to play Division 2. Um, then I'm thinking, I'm thinking they just said, okay, well, we've gone gold. We're shipping it to the printers. We're going to keep working on our right, game and right. we'll, we'll release. They expect to release a, a huge day one patch. Yeah. This is so. a funny thing, isn't it? Like the the PC and the Xbox patches are only about fifty gigs. Oh really? So like I understand that you're you're still working on it and like it says, you know, bug fixes and improvements game improvements. Mm-hmm. But it's like how can you <laughs> how can you only have like forty eight, fifty gigs for Xbox One and PC, and then the PS4 is so drastically different. I don't know. That's yeah, crazy. that one I can't answer. I don't know what's so different about the PS4 platform that would that would require that. Yeah. I would have expected the PC to be the larger patch, actually. Right, like high definition textures or some kind of like high, high def stuff, textures, right? uh, d- uh, different code, like multiple code sets that right. that supports all sorts of different PC configurations. But like PS4 is a known quantity. You know what video card is right. It's driving. What type of hard drive it's running. Yeah, you know what the operating system is doing. Especially uh, this is your sequel. I mean, you've already put this game at once. There should be yeah, even more I mean, of a reason you, to know what's going yeah, on. It's not your first rodeo. <laughs> <Exactly>. So, <laughs> one thing I did find funny about uh, the Division Two when at, in the opening, when you first start the game, they they have this really amazing looking sort of opening sequence. Uh, it's, it's really well done. It's, it's all, you know, CGI, you know, pre, pre rendered graphics and it looks, it looks great, but they're also rolling the credits like, you know, those before credits. Right. 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 And they're like, Oh, you know, featuring work by, you know, Ubisoft Canada and like this, this other, you know, developer over, over here that's affiliated with Ubisoft. And then, you know, Ubisoft, uh, over here and and, oh yeah we have this studio over here they're also owned by ubisoft i'm like so basically you're telling me ubisoft built this game is that what you're saying (laughs) they said it like over and over again yeah i know ubisoft at this point is just a publisher that owns like you know 30 different developer shops right right but i mean come on why don't you just say you know designed developed produced published by ubisoft right um (laughs) and move on with your life (laughs) <laughs> just letting you know. I mean, it was. I swear, there were there were ten or twelve studios that were all part of part of the division two. Yeah, and uh, nine of them. I would, I would like to see a making of video yeah. one day. I must have skipped that <laughs> intro. It's um. Well, I don't know if it was in the beta or not. I didn't play the beta. Yeah, I wanted to. I, I wanted need to, to know until... because in the division one, it had one of the coolest setups for your character creation. You're walking down the street, you look into a car window, and all of a sudden that's you see your character in the reflection and you make your character. How how you couldn't do that in the beta, so how did it go in Division Two? In the Division Two, you create your character and um Beforehand. You create your character beforehand and, and but you and you see that he's like or she is standing in like this shack or right. like like shanty. Yeah. It's it's not a well kept place, and uh, as soon as you hit go and you're good with your character, you name it everything. Um, then it's time. Then it then like the action starts rolling, and right. it, like it, so it's kind of like the car window scene, but yeah, that, that it's not as cool like as just walking around window. and then looking. It's it's more like okay, we're starting you off like this. You do your character, and then he turns around and opens the door, and he's being called off by like one of the sergeants or something. Right. So. Yeah, so it, it kind of opens into an action. Yeah, it 
It wasn't bad. It wasn't as cool of a touch as looking into a frozen car window. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really cool the first one. That was cool. It was a nice touch. I like that. <sighs> Path of Exile. Let's talk about Path of Exile. Yeah, so Path of Exile. Path of Exile on a PS4. We were talking about this, I believe, last week. Yeah, um, I've been wanting to get into this forever on PC. And, like, I, I kept wanting to. And then it's like, as soon as I heard the news for the PS4, I'm like, man, I wonder if I should just keep going on PC or just wait and start over from the PS4. But yeah, they finally announced that it's... Uh, well, you should do it on PC. Is that so, what you're playing on playing on now? Well... I was doing okay. So, so there's a couple of things about about Path of Exile that that, that everybody needs to know. Uh, right. I I will be picking it up on PS4. Okay. Don't get me wrong, uh, but that's because the PS4. Uh, well, Path of Exile everywhere on every console is free. It's right. absolutely free. Yep. There are microtransactions that mm-hmm. you can get, and and some of them, um, if 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 anybody is into it, I I can give you some recommendations. But most of them are for um tabs for your stash yeah, stash cosmetics cool. exactly yeah but yeah. but but the stash tabs themselves are it's almost essential right yeah that's kind of what i heard so too. many items i heard hey it's like the game's free but you probably should spend like 10 or 12 dollars buying yourself an extra couple tabs well not yeah well like there's there's one uh i would i'll recommend right off the bat and it's called the currency tab mm-hmm the currency tab. There are so many different types of currencies. They have so many mechanics in this game now That's like, that they have like hundreds of different types of currencies. Like, and, first of all, there's no money. Like it's just the currency is like items and orbs. It's and all scrolls. items. Scrolls, yeah. Right. It's not like gold. That's just a that's just a number that appears on your HUD. No, no, no. It's an actual item. So, so like uh, when you're when you to store like chaos orbs and transmutation orbs, uh, like all of these different things. And every vendor accepts something different, so you right. have to you have to organize these things. Um, a regular tab is just like a, a grid of squares, right. like old right. old school Diablo. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, since your currency also appears on those grids, having a stash tab <laughs> organizes it all. Yeah, is essential. It's the first thing that I ever bought from uh, for Path of Exile. Right, and they have a couple of other new tabs that have come out as well all of them are useful um but the currency tab that's i would say is priority yeah yeah that's the priority it's like you, um, you sell a sword and it's like you get scrolls and orbs back it's like right it's, it's very um, different and on the other microtransactions all of the cosmetic but the thing that sets path of exile apart on the cosmetic side is that the cosmetics in this game look damn cool I mean, I they make you look like a badass. Yes, they are good. Like, so the microtransactions for the cosmetics, mm-hmm. like we're talking like some super cool, like particle effects. It 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 looks really really good. Right. Yeah. They make everything look badass. Um, on the PC, the other the other thing, uh, the the other thing about Path of Exile, what I would say is. Don't underestimate the amount of loot that even a single enemy is going to drop. Um, when the Xbox One first came out, there were no loot filters in the game. Ouch. Um, there, there are loot filters on the PC. So don't underestimate the amount of loot that these guys have. It will it, drop in spades. I think you had even posted up a, uh, a picture in my Discord on yeah, the amount insane. of loot. Like that, that, that could have easily have been one like boss kill. That's oh, it. Probably was, yeah. Like that was insane. Yeah. So a loot filter filters that down to like the important stuff, and right. it also puts uh, sounds into the game for like important things. So you can like if if like a chaos orb, which is used as currency, right, right. drops, then you hear like a very distinctive sound. Right. So if you're um, just running around looting and running, and you hear the noise, at least you'd be like, hey, oh, hey, something, and you can kind of. I need to stop and find that, but. The community out there has come up with all of these different sound effects that are sound effect packs for these loot filters, right? Yep. So, like, I think I'm going to start a playthrough of Path of Path of Exile, where I I replace all of the sounds in the game 
with Owen Wilson just saying, wow, wow. You know, can you imagine that? I'm in. <laughs> it sounds awesome, right? <laughs> you can't do that on PS4. So, you know, yeah, uh, the PS4 so. will have loot filters. They've added that. Oh, did to they the say that? Okay, that's cool. Yes, it will have loot filters. I don't know how customizable they will be. On PC, everything is super customizable. Right. But, uh, um, I, but, but I definitely want to play on PS4 and check it out. Yeah, just the, the you know they got like six or six or seven classes or whatever, and it just the ascendancies and the, the skill trees, and now they got like the betrayal. Can you go back and do? Can you go back and do the? If maybe somebody can like send us a message if we don't know, but do you know if you can go back into like the older leagues once a new one comes out? No, you cannot. You cannot. No, because like the last one where you could go like in a mine go down in a mine and you keep going deeper and deeper and when you complete yeah, you, don't. you don't get no loot but then when the mine's completely done that's when all the loot explodes right but so you can still do that okay that's yeah. still in the game yeah okay i thought that was just just around with that league uh uh well for not, a lot of sure leagues how that works so for a lot of leagues they will some of the mechanics from previous leagues but... okay they'll keep them around if they're yeah, if if people enjoy it, then I I think they kept that. I think that one they kept. They kept the betrayal uh, mechanic, and now they've got a new like memory synthesis mechanic right, going on, putting like things on the grid and stuff. Yeah, well, there's that's the maps. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I know this game there's, is like dwarf there, fortress, but <laughs> like Diablo style. <laughs> It can be, but that's the thing is that like if if I were to if I were to pick up an ARPG right now and say you know is this better than Diablo Path of Exile one its price point is free okay yeah, right. I mean like people will spend a thousand a thousand hours on their characters yeah it's nuts so there was um there was a heist done every now and then we hear about these heists in Eve Online and and this was against a group called um, Hard Knocks in EVE Online. And basically they they live, I don't know how much everybody knows about EVE Online, but there are these systems that are behind wormholes. One route to get to your home one day, and then you have to take a completely different route to get home the next day right. if you live in a wormhole. These people lived in the wormhole. Oh, inside. And, yeah, inside okay. a, a system called Rage that was located behind a series of wormholes. Right. So finding them was inherently difficult. Um, the, the benefit for hard knocks in doing this is that nobody could ever assault them. Like, because in order to assault them, you would have had to have built up and built up an army and, and gotten everything ready to go. And then, you know, had, and this takes too much time in the game because right. by the time you had done this, the wormhole would have moved because it would take more than a day. Um, Fort no uh, Hard Knocks had built in, in this system, they had built what they called Fort Knox, which was, it was like this huge player owned citadel. Basically it was, it was, I mean, this thing has like doomsday weapons. It can, it can right. wipe out entire fleets of ships. Like there was, you could not assault it or at least it was thought that you right, could yeah. not assault it. A group called the Initiative came after them, and it took them a year of planning and thousands of players all working together in absolute secrecy. Now, the people who knew that this was actually happening, you could count on one hand, from what I understand. But it they they orchestrated like the movement of supplies and logistics and freighters and all yeah. of these things, and then they kicked it off. And and they they destroyed uh, Fort Knox, which was I thought it was an amazing feat. All told, it was like twenty thousand real dollars worth of items stolen or destroyed. Wow! So yeah, I thought that that was impressive. That's pretty cool. That's crazy. Yeah, every now and then you hear about something that took years of planning in Eve Online, and and just wipes out like a major uh, a major political power in the galaxy which you know these guys were basically terrorists 
in and that was the role that they played right, in, the, in world. the game right so how could they have yeah. that many people that part of the initiative were that many people but only so few knew about what was going on well so in the game you you have it's a corporate structure right and and the ceos are are orchestrating the movements of their corporations so so basically like if i were if i were just a regular worker in this corporation i would just get an order to say okay take take this freighter full of goods just a pilot right i'm a truck driver that's what i do right so i deliver the stuff and i'm done and i get paid on to the next job that's how they were doing this they weren't telling anybody what they were moving or just why they were moving it on a like they a per did. basis like hey you have one job go do this job yeah right hand doesn't talk to the left hand type of deal huh. uh yeah so we'll get into some hot flashes there and we'll get out of here Right on. All right. First one. Best use of a vehicle in a non-racing game. Farming simulator. Tractor? Yeah, I love farming, man. What? I don't know why. <laughs> Was it There's fun something to drive? about it. Best use of a vehicle in a non it's a non race. Although I guess you could have tractor races. We yeah. had tractor races where I grew up, so Yeah, did yeah. you have tractor races in the game? Uh I've never had tractor races in farming simulator, but you could do it if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that answer. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. A farming simulator would be my answer. All right. Number two. What TV channel doesn't exist, but totally should? Oh, wow. Um, I miss the old G4 TV. Oh, tech TV. Oh, I yes. I miss it. And uh, I wish they would bring it back because there were some of us that really liked watching it. Yeah. I bet you if you asked like 10 streamers on Twitch, I bet you nine of them would say that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Like, That's why we do what we do. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was such a good show anymore. I remember when I had Satellite, it's like, man, I'm like, oh, my God, there's a whole channel. And all I do is talk about computers and technology and games. <laughs> iPads. Right. This show is awesome. Right. Now, uh, I, I do have PlayStation View. Mm-hmm. And they have a couple of channels that are dedicated to esports, right? And there's another one that's dedicated to like let's plays. But these like like things that you Twitch would see on YouTube. YouTube and see that, yeah, yeah. But it's it's like I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch Strawberry play Minecraft <laughs> on like, yeah on yeah. on actual TV channels. Like yeah. how ah. Uh, G4 Tech Why TV did you was pick like, that person? Jeez. Like, no. Yeah, like G4 TV, Tech TV and stuff. That was like, they had TV shows and they were kind of like a lot of different subjects and it wasn't all, you know, they had hosts and. Yeah, was, it was a whole variety of, yeah, of things. Attack of the Show and. Attack of the Show was amazing. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah, I, I was watching uh, Leo Laporte on uh, Twitch a couple days ago. Yeah. Yeah, he's still doing the tech thing out there. He just yeah, went he off looks, on his own. He looks identical, man. He still looks still got yeah. like the same look. Does he? Does he really? <laughs> yeah, he still <laughs> looks like he hasn't aged a bit, man. He's still got like the exact same gray hair. Like he's <laughs> that's hilarious, man. That's All awesome. Right. Number three, good for him. Name a fictional place you'd like to live in. Hobbiton. I would love to live in the Shire. Yeah, yeah, man. The Shire was so cool looking. Like, who wouldn't want to live in the Shire? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, they had some good parties there. Well, where would you want to live? I don't know. The second I was asking you that question, the first thing I thought was Middle Earth. To be honest, <laughs> I was I wasn't <laughs> so think I wasn't thinking the Shire, but for yeah. some reason I was thinking Middle Earth. So <laughs> yeah, I think the Shire would be so cool, man. It was like. So I don't know. It was it, it was like a little. It, it was in Middle Earth terms. It was kind of like its own little oasis. Yeah. Like nobody knew it was there. It was. I probably lived very like quiet, Hel- very Helm's friendly, Deep or something. Oh no, I wouldn't want to live in fucking Helm's Deep, man. Are you kidding me? That place would be. Ugh, no, that place was built for war. No, give me the give me the Shire any day. <laughs> all right, <laughs> number four. If you didn't have to sleep, what would you do with all the extra time? Probably stream, probably stream or play more video games. 
Sleeping's a waste of time anyways, right? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I'd find some way to be productive, I think. Yeah. Productive <laughs> playing video games and streaming. <laughs> Hey, if I if I didn't play video games, I wouldn't be able to co-host this podcast. Yeah, true. All right, number five, last one. Top mm. three weapons from a video game doesn't, oh. all, doesn't have to be all from the same video game. Fair enough. Um, the BFG from Doom, because that was you know, yeah. Uh there was uh. I'm thinking there was, I don't remember the game, but I know that there was a game where like you had like a, a saw blade gun hmm. where it would like shoot saw blades out. And if you knew how to do it, you could actually ricochet them off of walls and around corners. Nice. That was cool. I, I can't remember the name uh, the game though. It was, a, it was an FPS obviously, but um, sounds like a postal or one of those type of games. Um, ah, uh, it wasn't postal. It was, ah, uh, it was, it, it was one of those FPSs where like you're 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 sort of sort of cobbling together your weapons and right, stuff. I, I don't right. I don't remember what it was. And then um, uh, any as my third answer, it would be any gun that you create uh in a game called Mother Gunship because. In that game, I don't know if you've ever played it. I streamed it uh, once or twice. It was awesome. It's it's like a roguelike game where you you find these bits and pieces and parts uh, for guns right. as you go through the level, and then you take those pieces and you go to like the little kiosk and you and you build yourself these massive guns. So you could have like a fifteen barrel shotgun with like grenade launchers on the side and it, it, it you they're just ridiculous they're ridiculous and um they're they're awesome so if you haven't checked out that game any gun in mother gunship is amazeballs that sounds crazy yeah it's awesome so uh, i was worried i wouldn't be able to answer that one but <laughs> well yeah. when it's not from the same video game it makes it a bit easier yeah the only thing I could come up with is uh, the Buster Sword from Seven Final Fantasy Seven. The Buster Sword, I would I would go with the Gunblade. If I was going, well, the Buster Final Sword Fantasy was really, but the Gunblade, the Gunblade was an awesome concept. I know it's cool. It's an awesome gun. It's an awesome concept. The game is okay. I just have but, so much uh, hate for the game and the main character. Oh, do you really? Well, he's very not nice. hate. I just that's just he's, the first Final Fantasy that I played. That I didn't enjoy, and then I kind of yeah. fell off from there. So, teenage angst, yeah, is, is what that yeah, that much. that was Squall's problem, yeah. And then like uh, Mega Man's blaster, X Buster. <laughs> you re- really it's the like, little freaking ping pong ball <laughs> blaster? Yeah, you could Come hold on. the power button down, man, and zoom that thing up, <laughs> and you could do the Hadouken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's the only Mega Man that I ever played that much is Mega Man X. Oh no! Oh. The original Mega Man just had like a ping pong ball blaster. I could never get into Mega Man. Not the original. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. Same here. Like I said, I, I played X a bit, but other than that, I I couldn't get into any of the other ones either. Yeah, I just I didn't find anything exciting about it. Now this this is probably like uh, this this is. This is heresy for me saying this, but Mega Man, I mean, let's be honest. There was nothing about Mega Man when he first came out. Just saying. It wasn't, it wasn't that good. There was nothing exciting about what, you're saying people shooting just, little white circles. People just looking back on it now a little more fond than they should be. I'm, th- I'm saying anybody that looked fondly on it at the time was probably being nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. You're 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 free to disagree with me, but there was nothing exciting about it, at least for me. There was Maybe nothing like exciting. The challenge, I think. I think it seems like a lot of people always talk about how hard they were, and it was hard. How much of a it was a hard game, but I I probably would have continued on with it if I shot something more exciting than a white circle across than, the screen. Than a pea shooter, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it felt it felt 
it yeah, felt I terrible. Yeah, that that main that small little weapon you start with is pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and if you don't know that it gets better, then what's the point? Yeah, for sure. So, all right, all right that, that's gonna do it for this week. Yep, that's another week in the books. All right, man. Well, if you've enjoyed the Dreadcast, uh, thank you very much for listening. You can catch Dreadnought on Twitter and Twitch at DreadnoughtX. Uh, you can always catch the uh, the Dreadcast Twitter feed itself at the Dreadcast. Or we're also available on Facebook.com slash the Dreadcast. You can find us pretty much anywhere uh, podcasts are downloaded. Uh, Google, Spotify, uh, Spreaker, any, any one of those. Uh, will work uh and of course my name is jovia and you can find me on twitter and twitch at jovia so thank you very much everybody have a great afternoon nicely done have a good night everybody <laughs>